Nowhere is the true spirit of the holidays more evident than in families who've received a second chance at life. We begin in the Caribbean, just offshore from one of the British Virgin Islands, on December 25, 1991. Tom and Gina Muhaw of Annapolis, Maryland, were celebrating that Christmas day with their 16-year-old son, Brian, and 14-year-old daughter, Stephanie, aboard their chartered sailboat. The problem with the north shore of the Virgin Islands is that if there's a big storm out in the ocean, then there's nothing to break it up. And so it'll run for as much as 3,000 miles and build up a big swell. They're not like your normal wave. They're extremely powerful, and they are extremely deceptive. You don't really know you're in them until you're right up against shore. The day was gorgeous, and I think that this particular family got really caught unawares in seconds. That's ready to weigh in? Sure. Poor kids, get up. Let's just go. Tom had been sailing for more than a dozen years. We'd come down here for a week in order to sail amongst the little islands and anchor out at night. The winds are usually very favorable. The seas are pretty calm. Snorkeling is wonderful. What are we going to do today? Well, we're going to go out Christmas Day, we had anchored our main vessel off of Green Key, walked around it, and done a little bit of snorkeling. Then we were going to go over to Sandy Key. Sandy Key was a tiny, uninhabited island with no source of fresh water on it. When you approach the island, you have to find the appropriate spot. You have to watch the waves. to see where everybody was and I could not find my daughter. Tom and Gina Muha and their two teenage children were in a motorized dinghy on their way to explore a tiny deserted island when a rogue wave capsized their boat hurling them into the sea. I knew that my ankle was broken. I very quickly did an accounting to see where everybody was. And I could not find my daughter. Our daughter was trapped underneath the boat and it was very hard to get her out because my shoulder had been crushed. In one form or another, the wave crunched all of us. Brian, when I looked back at the beach, was absolutely covered with blood, all down his side, and just oozing. I was trying to right the dinghy, because there wasn't even anybody else around. I kept thinking, there's nobody to help us. Like, I've got to try to get my family, at least back to the main boat, where we have a radio. But... I didn't have the strength. My ankle was just kind of hanging. But I hadn't thought about my injuries at all. I mean, you just react to what your kids need. My son had a very serious head wound. You could see his skull. And I was really scared. Put your hand right here. Okay. Jen, I'll get him. We realized we were stuck here just the four of us. We would put our hands on one another's bodies to 
stop the flow of blood. Okay. Okay. Let me get help. Maybe. I felt tremendously helpless to know that my family was really hurt and that I could not do anything to get them to help. There was a small boat that we noticed offshore going by. I started to wave and holler, but they just kept going. No! No, we need help! Our hearts just sank. We absolutely refused to let him lay down. I knew that you just don't do that. You keep pressure on a wound and you stay alert. I called him my baby. He was 16 years old. I told him over and over again that I loved him. He thought I was saying goodbye. And the question really was, would we all get off alive? Because there was so much blood that I wasn't sure that we would get somebody to help us in time. I love you guys. Slow your breathing down, Brian. Slow everything down. Please. You see sailboats off in the distance. You know they're not going to see you. Sandy Key is very, very tiny and is probably a speck to them. Brian was not doing well. I can remember saying to my children that everything was going to be okay. I wasn't sure whether I believed that or not. Help! Over here! It was like angels. It was like angels coming up out of the water to help us. We're going to have to wait for a wave. Gary and Penny Knowles had been sailing with clients when a boater told them about the accident, and they called for help. I carry a very large medical kit, so we thought, well, we'll just go over and see if we can do anything. Gary managed to get close enough in to get me over the front of the boat with all the gear. Then he anchored the boat off and swam in. The head wound looked very bad. Basically, his father had his hand behind his head, holding the head together. It was quite a deep... Wound. Propeller shaped. Thank you for coming, Betty. Oh, the rescue boat's on its way. Virgin Island Search and Rescue arrived within 45 minutes. Mike Masters was driving the Visar boat. It looked a little bit like Gillingham's Island, you know, some people sitting up there. We immediately jumped into action and powered in reverse towards the shore as far back as we dared into the surf line. Among the volunteers who responded that Christmas day was Brian Gandy. There were some really awesome surf running at the time. We basically had to prepare them to go back out. It was going to be a pretty bumpy ride. These people are basically going head first straight into the waves. And if that stretcher tips over, uh, we're in serious trouble. We had to build up the confidence level of the people because they were definitely scared. We would stand on the water's edge for about a minute, minute and a half, reading the waves. And once we were committed, we'd just go charging straight in. Our timing had to be perfect. It was a very scary thing to see your son being taken away, strapped down in a floating gurney. And I thought to myself, if they lose the grip, they lose Brian. And then we all had to deal with that, you know, because then you know, well, I'm going to be next. Everybody together, go! With the Visar people just plowing through it, you could see them getting tired. I mean, it took such effort to get out through that surf and to keep that person in good condition. They did such a good job. They had put my head in a collar. 
I could not turn my head left or right to find my children. But I really needed to be able to know that they were okay and to touch them. What you realize in a situation like that is that you really are a family and that you, you need to take care of each other and that you can take care of each other. All of these little frictions that go on between parents and teenagers are really insignificant. There's an incredible amount of love. After being examined by a doctor and nurse picked up from a nearby cruise ship, Tom, Gina, and their two children were treated at a local hospital and released within a day. It took 40 stitches to close Brian's head wound. I remember the ride to the hospital. Had a bumpy ride on <laughs> rocky roads down here. But I'd like to thank everybody that helped out in the whole process. Barney, he took me from the hospital to go get clothes and stuff for Brian and my mother at the hospital. And he drove me around all day on Christmas. We do this because we care about what happens to people. Obviously, that Christmas day had been wrecked far more than mine had. I would never go out on a boat again without a handheld radio in a waterproof pouch. If something happened, I have a way of being able to call Visar or the Coast Guard or 911 or whoever it was. I think for me that was the number one lesson. <laughs> if that boat hadn't seen them go up on the shore and come over to us and that we could have radioed, then it could have been too long for somebody to find them. They're all from Annapolis, which is the sailing capital of the world. This was definitely my most unusual Christmas, one that I won't forget, and I know they won't either. <laughs> the one thing the father said is he could not believe how we were going to get them off through these waves. We showed them. Because <laughs> you knew, like, you couldn't swim or anything, and right. it was just right, right in there. It's like, Ooh. don't let go. <laughs> They're a terrific organization. These people got up, left their homes on Christmas Day, and um, saved our family. The emergency brake was on, it was in park, and nobody thought to block it or anything.